Second shot to nine. It shot like maybe about 144. What did you hit and what was, where were you kind of trying to get it there? Yeah, I had a, you know, I had a good number. Um, obviously, that back right pin. Um, I had a 52-degree wedge and a little bit of a hanging lie. And I was playing for about four or five yards of uh, adrenaline to about three or four yards short of the pin. Um, you know, just in case you get a little help or a little gust. I, I figured an eight to ten footer right below it would be would be perfect, pretty makeable. Um, I caught it a groove low and came up just a hair short and, um, you know, had a little longer putter, putt than I wanted for 59. But Did the putt look good at a certain point? It looked great the entire <laughs> way. How close was it getting before you? Yeah, I, all the, the read was really, the guess was sort of in the beginning of the putt. It was a grain change. It was kind of right to left grain and then left to right and down. And I knew if I got it to the one point at the grain change, I knew what it was going to do. Um, so, you know, obviously you're hitting it hard from 53 feet. Um, just wanted to have really good speed. And I, I felt like I had the right speed. Just hung out there a little longer than I, than I needed. Uh, we were watching you from the side, so we didn't see what side did it miss on and how close was it? It missed on the high side, uh -huh. the, uh, the left side. Um, everyone says that's the pro side, but pros hit it in the middle of the cup. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I never understood that. But, uh, yeah, it, it was – I mean, you know, the, the greens have been running great. They've had a little bit of grain, so I've been, play, I've been playing it a little more than I would normally yeah. out here. Um, so I aired on sort of that high side because I knew with good speed it would just – I was playing on it falling – fast you yeah. know falling hard a couple putts I've had have just broke across the hole that didn't have much speed at the end right. and it just didn't do that you know you ever had a putt for 59 you know any time in your life I have I had one yesterday I was just on the 15th hole <laughs> so uh yeah um not on 18 I haven't <laughs> had one on nine when I was about 14 years old Yeah, I mean, we, we spoke earlier in the week about about patience, and I've been who I feel like I've been tested, but um, you know, holding, sort of staying strong on being patient. I've been playing well, missed a missed a few cuts by a shot, uh, four or five cuts this uh, fall season by a shot, um, and including kind of going into the last year. And so I knew my game was trending. I knew I was playing well. Um, you know, like what we talked about, just staying patient, and it would click. And you know. It, I even was tested this week. I was hitting it close, um, had a couple good saves, but when I wasn't saving, I was hitting it really tight and scaring the hole all week, um, especially on Saturday. Um, and then finally, when I made that eagle putt on 15 uh, today on my front nine, the back nine, um, I was like, man, maybe this momentum and this, you know, maybe it'll just shift a little bit for me. I can get them falling, and they, sure enough, they did. Did you, uh, on Thursday, you really had a goal good? I understand you, you, there was a marker out there that might have given you a little bit of a wrong number or something. I, I, don't, I don't know, but you know, how did you explain bouncing back and then uh, Saturday or Friday? Yeah, Friday just to make the cut. And yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was a little bit of a grind those first two days. Um, you know, I did get it going at at times and sort of um, you know a few setbacks, but it's kind of been part of that process is just really staying patient because I know when I get going, I can make a lot of birdies and and even, you know, a couple of Eagles this week. So, you know, the conditions were a bit more favorable today for scoring. Um, yesterday I was so close in some really hard conditions to shooting four or five under, even though I shot even. Um, and I knew that was a big moving day to be in position to sort of have a chance today. Um, so that was sort of something I had to swallow last night and, and put it behind me so that I could try to come out and shoot a low one today. When did the 59 first enter your mind today as a possibility? Yeah, so my uh, my 16th hole. 16th? Yeah, seven, the par five. I was, yeah. um, you know, it came off a couple birdies in a row and uh, just trying to find a headspace that kind of kept the pedal down mm -hmm. versus, you know, uh, coasting in or just wanted to try to have a, a goal to birdie every hole or make an eagle coming in. So it was helpful to be like, and hey, here's something it did. I can do. Yeah, it was, uh, I sort of, it was the catalyst to try to keep the pedal down and, and focus on shooting a low score. Um, and actually the 59 kind of took the pressure off. I'm thinking of baseball where a 
pitcher has a perfect game going and the teammates don't talk to him. How did your, how did your playing partners uh, treat you? Oh, uh, they were great. I mean, um, you know, obviously Bill and, 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 um, and BG, uh, lots to talk about between the Gators and yeah. sports right now. So um, they were great. I was pretty focused, though, so I would say I, I probably wasn't the chatty Cathy. On eight. Um, no, on the little pitch, yeah. the eighth hole. No, um, it was pretty good lie just there in that that you know the, the padded down rough where people kind of walk through there. Um, I knew if I kept my speed up with the shot, I'd have a little spin, and I, I was it was pretty. My plan was to land it right on the grain change, and if it came out hot, it would check into the grain a little bit, and if it came out a little bit soft with a little with no spin, it would hit on the downslope and run. Kind of just landed it right where I wanted. So. Any idea if your dad ever shot 60 out here? He has not. I know that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> because he uh, had a long ways to go in that career to match that. But uh, I, I'll hold uh, hold the 60 over his head tonight over a beer. <laughs> Tell us about Tito's Benditos. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, you know, obviously being really close to Jacksonville, uh, where I'm from, Jack's Beach, Ponte Vedra area. Had a lot of family and friends up this week. And um, my, my nickname growing up was Tito. So uh, it's what my family calls me and, and close friends. So, um my sister gets a little creative and festive with some of the hats and shirts sometimes, and uh, yeah, so sort of a really awesome support group, and I'm I'm pretty glad and fortunate to have that out here this week. Anything else? All right, back to it, sir. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, Appreciate it. Appreciate it.